I need you to look at me when I'm speaking. Hello, everybody. Good evening. My name is Andrea Sidisati. I'm the executive editor of Room Org Magazine, and welcome to the official Shutter premiere watch party screening thing of Allegoria. This movie has just come out at Shutter. We've been so excited about it. We've covered this movie in the July August edition of Room Org Magazine. We have some special guests in the house, obviously. We have um, Allegoria filmmaker Spider One. First of all, what made you decide that that this, this current darkest timeline we are living in was the right time for your debut feature film? Uh, darkest time as in, as in pandemic, is that what you mean? If there's a particular darkness that, that, that pushed your hand, I'd love to know. Well, I mean, it was, it was a necessity of not going insane. Um, when we were not able to, you know, I I don't, if anyone knows it, my main gig or has been for many years has been music and touring and, and music just stopped and there was no real light at the end of the tunnel. And it became really clear that it was time to, to put this creative energy in a direction because it, you know, I, I had no idea when I was going to be able to get back to music, but I'd always had interest in film and television and, you know, ever since I was a kid and I had, I had dabbled in it and I produced a TV show, uh, a horror comedy. And, but anyway, it was, it was just sort of like, me and Chrissy were sitting around like going, man, we need to, let's make, let's make movies. Let's assemble. You know, we have great relationships with people. We live in LA. We're fortunate enough to know great actors and, 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 and DPs and, and crew people. And so we sort of started to assemble these mini dream teams um, just for our own sanity. And it, one thing led to, to another and suddenly we're actually making movies. I'm an allegory of nothing. Others have seen what is and ask why. I have seen what could be and ask why not. Spider, as someone who has been creating on a pretty big platform for a really long time, were you cognizant of fans of your music and how they might um, approach the film? Were you trying to speak to them on the same level that you've been speaking to them for the past 30 years no, you've been I, I don't know it's I don't think about it that way I don't even with even with the band I don't really think too much about like what are the fans going to think I'm always aware of my fan base and I think what they might expect but I don't necessarily give them that either and over the years I think they've come to appreciate that but the movie thing is a, it's a very different animal you know it's a very different it's a side of me that is, you know, as important, if, if, if not more than the music thing, because I have been watching, I have been obsessed with movies since I was, you know, uh, since I could watch movies. As a little kid, I was watching film, films, you know, you know, the wildly inappropriate films at a very young age and understanding them and, you know, watching Clockwork Orange on loop at 10 years old, and, you know, and, I told this story the other day that I had forgotten about when I was in the, I think it was the fifth grade. We had a school bulletin board and the teacher asked, that, you know, we could all pick something that we wanted to do. And I said, I'd want to be the film critic. And she's like, well, that's great. And I think she expected me to come in next week with like a review of Pinocchio or something. And I came in with this like three page review of Bob Fosse's All That Jazz, you know, and it's just like, she's like, you saw that movie? I'm like, yeah, it was great. <laughs> I mean, I'm I'm an, a nerd to to the end nth power. I've grown up on horror and sci-fi and comic books since I was, you know, five years old. So, um, but to answer your question, no, I don't. I don't try to like spoon feed anything, and I hope they like it, and I hope they can enjoy it. But if they don't, there are probably other people that will. Art is in everything and everyone. Good. Be a rock star. Hi, rock star. 
one of the things I really loved about Allegoria is how it does engage with not only art in many forms, but in dark art, in spooky art, in violent art. And, you know, it, it kind of addresses those of us who like that kind of art and those of us who don't and uh, and kind of asks who the the bigger weirdo is. Um, having been presumably on both sides of that coin, Spider One, can you talk about that? Yeah, I mean, this whole this whole concept really was just born of my own existence, which is that, you know, I've never not lived a, a creative life. And in other words, and also a creative life as a means of, to survive. And that that creates like, you know, a lot of anxiety and doubt, self doubt. And at times, like an unreasonable ego that you have to develop and a thick skin and all this stuff. So it really, you know. I think anybody that's that sort of suffered through, you know, trying to make a living as a creative person has always wished that they could wake up one morning and have the desire to be a plumber. You know what I mean? It's something just like I get up, I go to work, someone pays me and I go home. Hmm. But the problem is, is that art has a really strange way of possessing you, you know, and I, I've been, you know, I've talked about this movie a lot this week and I've come to realize that art doesn't you know the artist doesn't control the art the art controls the artist and i think that that's what this movie is about and so that manifests in so many different ways with all these different characters you know marcus is probably the quintessential you know on the you know trying to be this arrogant self you know just dominant uh confident better than everybody guy but when he's alone in that mirror in the bathroom he looks at himself as a fraud you know so, yeah, I mean, I just think it's an interesting, you know, and I was, it, it, it's particularly in the world of horror, I, I, I felt like it was a, you know, there have been some horror movies, I think, that have touched on the art world, but um, even just writing it, just learn, the vernacular of art is, is ba are basically horror terms, you know, we all discuss the tortured artist and the suffering for your art and selling your soul, and I mean, these are all, these are all word terms so it just made sense in my head um and i think it was really fun to play with these characters and also have a little fun you know it, it's it's a bit self-aware in the fact that it you know it realizes how absurd that we can all be you know that we take ourselves that seriously sometimes for splattering paint on a canvas you know Ask real quick about the title, and I'm wondering if you know Spider One. What it is? What is actually the difference between an allegory and a metaphor? You're you're talking to somebody that you assume is much smarter than they are. <laughs> um, <laughs> well, you didn't call it metaphoria. Doesn't sound. I mean, you know, the, the reason you choose allegoria is because in the middle of the word is gore. And so it just seems like a great horror movie title. I mean, it was a, it was a, and you know, it's funny. It was a difficult. Uh, the title came later, um, and because it wasn't sort of this pseudo. I mean, it's not. It, you know, it's an anthology, but it's sort of a non-traditional anthology in the sense that you'll see that all the stories do tie together and the characters do tie together, even if they don't know each other. In some regard, they come together. So, trying to find a a title that represented this idea and, you know, that is based around all these different art forms. And if art, art is nothing but representation of something that it is not, you know, um, at least in my mind. Uh, um, and uh, so, you know, just the word allegory uh, just fell, it, it felt correct. Um, so I didn't want to get too story specific with the title. And, um, but yeah, I don't know the difference between allegory and a metaphor. I think it doesn't matter. Thing. Metaphor is it doesn't sound scary at all. No, it doesn't. You know, no, it doesn't. My new sounds like metaphor. Yeah, it doesn't work. Sounds like something you cut off the end of a penis. Well, thank you so much for your time, guys, for joining us. We hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thanks so much to our guests. Um, and yeah, new issue with an interview with Spider that was just about as 
illustrative as the conversation we just had. <laughs>